This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to make a second video to cover the Ledger emergency, and I'm calling this Don't Use Ledger Hardware Wallets. There have been a lot of people clamoring for this video. As long-term viewers of my channel know, I've always recommended against using Ledger hardware wallets, especially in a single SIG setup. The fact that the firmware was and remains closed source was always a deal breaker for me, and this is why I was against recommending it. Ledger's many customer data leaks also showed, I thought, a remarkable disregard for user security and privacy. And I'll link to a couple articles here if you're not familiar with what happened. If you're in the business of security and privacy, you really should not be having leaks like this happen. Ledger's support for ship coins, in other words, altcoins, was also something that I was not happy with. Though I did look the other way for Trezor support for ship coins. And what happened? Trezor rewarded my faith in them by choosing a coin join implementation. We've talked about this a coin join implementation with Wasabi and ZK Snacks that is actively funding a chain surveillance company. Lesson learned no more Trezor. I made a couple of videos about that that I'll link to in the description notes below. Now I'm only interested in Bitcoin only companies that haven't lost the plot like Trezor has and like Ledger lost the plot a long time ago. Companies like Blockstream Jade, their hardware wallet, and the Cold Car hardware wallet. If you're interested in learning more about what happened with Trezor and their coin join implementation, I will link to both of these videos in the description notes below. So that's a brief synopsis of my stance on hardware wallets up until this point. Never recommended the Ledger, and now we're seeing as of today that Ledger has launched a distributed KYC-based cloud seed recovery service, and then they quickly deleted the announcement. They, maybe they brought it back. Basically what this does is it's called Ledger Recover, and it splits your seed phrase, in other words, your 12 words or 24 words into three encrypted shards and then distributes them to three custodians. And this is a way, an alternate way of backing up your hardware wallet according to them if you lose your recovery seed. I think this is a really bad idea and here's the big problem in my opinion. If the new Ledger firmware has the ability to split the recovery seed, which should be stored securely inside of it, into three encrypted shards and then send them out from the hardware wallet to these custodians, this is not only a feature, this is a potential vulnerability that can be exploited by an attacker. So what's Ledger's response to this? Well, they say that this is an optional subscription, but here's the question. If I can't check the firmware because it's closed source, how do I know that this functionality is optional? Just trust us, says Ledger, and basically this is the problem, having to reintroduce trust into the equation. If you take another look at that new BS, no BS Bitcoin article that I linked to before, if you scroll down, you'll see a little bit more about how this works. Basically splits your recovery phrase into three encrypted shards and shares them with three custodians, Ledger itself, a crypto custody firm called CoinCover, and a code escrow company called Escrow Tech. This looks to me a lot like they're using Shamir's secret sharing, SSS, and this is something that I don't recommend using in conjunction with hardware wallets. I know that Trezor uh, offers this as well. I much prefer a multi-sig solution as I've talked about in other videos. But here's the thing about how Shamir's secret sharing works. The secret is shared among a group so that the secret cannot be revealed unless a quorum of the group acts together to pool their knowledge. In this case, this is the problem though. What happens when a government goes to these three custodians and basically forces them to reconstruct your private key from the three shards. You are not part of this quorum. You are not part of this group that acts together to pool their knowledge. It's basically just these three companies, Ledger, CoinCover, and Escrow Tech. And so this is another real vulnerability. The other problem, of course, is you have to KYC, provide personal information to use the Ledger recovery service. So now these companies, presumably, Ledger certainly knows who you are, and the US government can subpoena or otherwise get this information. This is why I recommend using a hardware wallet that has an open source firmware like the Blockstream Jade or the Cold Card. Now there's some controversy about whether Cold Card software is still open source. It's not open source technically any longer. As far as I can tell as an outsider, this is because Foundation and a separate company cloned Cold Card's code to make the Passport hardware wallet. This is something that's perfectly legal to do to do with uh, FOSS code, but still kind of a jerky thing to do. FOSS, of course, stands for free and open source software. So Cold Card changed the software license on their software so that companies can no longer do that, companies like Foundation. So Cold Card software is no longer free and open source, 
but the source code is verifiable. You don't need to trust them in the same way that you need to trust ledgers, firmware, and software. If you go to the cold card website, you'll see here verifiable source code. All the cold card code is viewable, editable, and verifiable. You can compile it yourself. You cannot do this with a ledger, so don't let anyone try to confuse the issue of FOSS versus verifiable source code. Basically, the only difference now is people cannot steal and commercially use cold cards code. Conclusion, why even consider Ledger when there's so many other good hardware wallets out there whose firmware is viewable and auditable? Closed source firmware is a deal breaker, always has been a deal breaker for me. And I also think we as Bitcoiners should try to support Bitcoin only companies and also support companies that are not so eager to KYC you and bend the knee to governments. And this is why my two favorite hardware wallets are still the Blockstream Jade and the Cold Card Hardware Wallet. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.